What if Earth was flat? A cosmic whisper started spreading. A rumor about Earth. Oh no. I feel so flat out insecure right now. Flat? <laughs> but how would that even work? <laughs> Poor Earth tried to hide its curves, but the other planets were relentless. Darling, one cannot simply be flat. It's against cosmic etiquette. So, what if Earth suddenly became as flat as a cosmic pancake? Look, if you were flat, all your water would rush to the middle. Everything else would just slide right off the sides. You see, Earth, gravity always pulls towards the center of a mass. And what about the moon? Its orbit would be all wobbly. Spinning flat is hard work. Earth would wobble like a wonky frisbee. All right, everyone. Time to round things out. Check it out. The sun's energy is making you puff back up. It's working. Huh? Uh, much better. Round is definitely my best shape. See? That's why being a round, beautiful sphere is the best way to be. Whoa! What is that? It's, it's just sucking everything in. We found a cosmic vacuum cleaner. Has anyone seen that weird, super dark spot out there? It's emptier than usual empty space. Oh, Mercury, don't worry about every little shadow. Probably just a cosmic dust bunny. Focus on your orbit. It's not a dust bunny. It's pulling me. I can't stop spinning towards it. Whoa, Mercury. That's no dust bunny. That's a black hole. A black hole isn't empty space, Mercury. It's the leftovers of a supergiant star that collapsed in on itself. And that edge, Mercury, is called the event horizon. Cross that, and not even light can escape its pull. It's truly a point of no return. So, it's really like a cosmic vacuum cleaner, but for everything. Even us. Ugh. Only if you get super, super close, Earth. Black holes are powerful, but they mostly just suck in things that are already way too near. Our sun is way too far away to ever get sucked in. So no, it won't vacuum us up. Huh? Whew. That's a relief. I don't want to be vacuum dust. Get ready! Ever wondered who's the fastest in space? This is the Cosmic Speed Race. All right, everyone. Time for the annual Cosmic Lap Race. On the count of three. Whew. This wide track is tough on a big guy. This is ridiculous. I'm still on my first mile. This is gonna take me 165 Earth years to finish. Ha! I told ya! Fastest orbit in the whole system. That's what you get for being so close to the sun. It's all about gravity. The closer you are to the sun, the stronger its pull, and the faster you have to move to keep from crashing into it. And the farther away you are, the longer your track is. I have to travel over 4 billion kilometers just to finish one lap. Give it up for our speed demon, Mercury. Fastest orbit goes to the closest planet. You know, I'm glad I'm not the fastest. Moving this fast and being this close to the sum sounds exhausting. I only have one bory moon. What if I had like 79 moons? Surprise! You look jealous, so I sent you a box of my extras. Enjoy! Oh, this is gonna end well. Good luck tracking all those orbits, Earth. Tides! My tides are going crazy! It's like having 79 tiny hands pulling my water in every direction! When you have too many bodies, their combined gravity makes their orbits unstable. This is called orbital chaos. Jupiter, take your moons back. 
I can't handle the gravity. I miss my calm, predictable tides. You learned a lesson, little one. It's not just the number of moons. It's the mass and stable orbit. One dependable friend is definitely better than 78 chaotic strangers. Go on, little moons. Go find your own big planet to orbit. I'm good with my original steady buddy. Ever wondered what would happen if the moon turned into a giant icy ring like mine? Uh, Earth? Are you getting bigger or am I getting closer? I feel squishy. My moon! It's gone! I just made a beautiful, terrifying mess! Ah, the Rocha Limit. A magnificent gravitational shredding. Welcome to the club, Earth. This ring is a disaster. It's constantly raining little icy pebbles all over my surface. That ring is too thick. Most rings are made of tiny, organized dust, not huge, icy chunks. My rings are perfectly maintained. They are mostly small water ice particles that gently orbit. Your new ring is quite untidy. The biggest chunks will keep crashing down as meteor showers. You'll have constant fireworks of doom. And where are my tides? My ocean is all confused. The fish don't know what to do. My whole self, my solid mass was important for your tides, Earth. A ring of pieces just doesn't pull the same way. Ah, I see. My rings don't create significant tides either. Fascinating how a single, intact body exerts a different kind of influence. Answer your question, Earth. Your ring won't last forever. All those icy pieces will either fall to your surface as meteorites or be flung out into space. So, if the moon was a ring, Earth would have lots of meteor showers, very weak tides, and eventually the ring would disappear. You're better off with your moon intact. Okay, I appreciate the lesson. I'll take my dependable, tide-making moon over a messy temporary ring any day. But I sure do miss my moon, though. Ever wonder who has the shortest day? Time for the mystery of the fastest spin. Spin for the win! Time check! Jupiter finished one day in less than 10 hours. Ooh, I'm dizzy, but yeah! I'm the Speed King. I'm big, but I'm super fast. Well, if anyone needs me, I'll be here, finishing this tiny scarf. I'm almost done with day one. Wait, 243 Earth days for one of your rotations? Your day is longer than your year. How is that possible? Most of us spin counterclockwise, dear. But Venus spins backward. That retrograde rotation is why your day takes so long. A big takeaway? Rotation speed is everything. I'm fast because I'm big and gas, but Venus is slow because she's stubborn and spins backward. Woohoo! Hit that like button, subscribe for cosmic fun, and comment your questions. Stay curious, space cadets!